பிஸ்மில்லாஹிம் கௌரவ பிரதி குழுக்களின் தவிசாளர் அவர்களே தாங்கள் சபாநாயகர் ஆசிரியத்திலே இருக்கின்ற சமயத்திலே இன்று ஏவிபி கட்சியினர் முன்மொழிந்து வழிமொழிந்து இருக்கிற இந்த பிரேரணை குறித்து ஒரு சில வார்த்தைகள் பேச கிடைப்பதை இட்டு நான் மகிழ் பொறுகிறேன் அதே நேரம் இந்த நாட்டின் அரசியலிலே ஒரு புதிய கொந்தளிப்பு நிலையை உருவாக்கி இன்று பாராளுமன்றம் அமைதியாக கூடுகிற ஒரு சூழலை ஐம்பத்தொரு நாட்கள் எங்களையெல்லாம் அல்லோல கல்லோலப்படுத்திவிட்டு அமைதியாக மீண்டும் அரசாங்கம் ஒன்றை முன்னெடுத்துச் செல்லுகிற ஒரு வாய்ப்பு ஏற்பட் ஏற்பட்டிருப்பதை இட்டு இந்த போராட்டத்திலே எங்களோடு இணைந்து கொண்ட சகல கட்சிகளுக்கும் சிவில் சமூக அமைப்புகளுக்கும் ஏன் இந்த நாட்டின் ஜனநாயகத்தை பாதுகாக்க வேண்டும் என்று போராடிய சகல பொதுமக்களுக்கும் எங்களுடைய மனமார்ந்த நன்றியர்தலை முதல் கண் சமர்ப்பணமாக நான் செய்து வைக்க விரும்புகிறேன் மிஸ்டர் டிப்டி சாமன கமிட்டீஸ் டுடே வி ஆர் டிஸ்கஸ் இன் திஸ் மோஷன் தட் பர்டேன்ஸ் டு த கொஸ்டன் ஆஃப் த பாலிஷன் ஆஃப் த எக்ஸிகூட்டிவ் பிரசிடென்சி சின்ஸ் நைன்டீன் எயிட்டி டூ சக்சஸிவ் பிரசிடென்ஷியல் கேண்டிடேட்ஸ் ஹாவ் கேம்பெயின் கேம்பெயின் for a mandate to abolish this executive presidency every one of them have also succeeded in breaching that mandate and attempting to contest a subsequent presidential election as well as one president quite recently brought about the 18th amendment to perpetually remain the president of this country so the leo the greed to retain power particularly executive power is such that everyone who promised to abolish the presidency succeeded in not abolishing it but doing the reverse by attempting to retain it and contest it once again as well as to attempt to be in office perpetually so that is the history of the abolition of the executive presidency in this country no more particularly on two occasions where the directly executive president could not control parliament and a different party came to power in parliament it resulted in serious duality in power there had been two centers of power we experienced this between 2001 and 2004 where his her excellency chandrika bandar naik kumar tunga who was elect, elected to her second term had to survive with a hostile parliament where the current prime minister had the control of parliament and i was a central figure in that uh, drama since she lost power in parliament because she expelled me from cabinet and i had to cross the floor of this house and uh, within 5 months of my uh, going to the opposition the government lost its majority and she had to dissolve parliament in the subsequent election we joined the united national party as a constituent party of the Uh, then united national front coalition defeated her excellency the president's party the people's alliance and formed the administration so that period between 2001 and 2004 there was an attempt to survive as a cohabitation government that experience resulted in serious policy differences between the two sections particularly the executive president her party and those who represented her in parliament as well as the party which had the majority in parliament that of the honorable ranil vikram singh who uh, had to be uh, sent out of power in the election in 2004 so this uh, experiment of cohabitation between two centers of power when they are from different political parties is something that we are experiencing now once again i am 
in this whole drama and other central figure by being on the side of Honorable Ranil Vikram Singh. Whereas, we elected His Excellency Maitripala Sirisena on a common platform with variety of different partners, both directly and indirectly. The Janata Vimukti Peramuna also joined in the struggle to unseat His Excellency Mahindra Rajapaksa for the very reason that he wanted to perpetuate his power by bringing the 18th Amendment and arrogate to himself all executive power in one single office, which became a serious threat to parliamentary democracy in the country. His Excellency Maestro Pala Sirisena contested the election on a platform of totally abolishing the executive presidency and with a promise not to seek office once again. But however, his actions for the past one year or more has convinced all of us that he is seeking to renege the promise he made to the people and whether directly or indirectly is attempting to seek power again by wishing at least to become a candidate in the next election. Now yesterday we had a massive rally at the, in the golf is green. Perhaps one of the largest rallies that this country ever saw. The people turned up to celebrate the restoration of democracy in the country since they saw the attempt by the perpetrated government that was installed wrongfully, unconstitutionally by His Excellency the President in the uh, October 26th swearing in ceremony. So we have seen quite interestingly the swearing in ceremonies of Prime Ministers being done in secret without media being present twice. One to install Mahindra Rajapaksa as the Prime Minister and the other to swear in Ranil Vikram Singha as Prime Minister. Be that as it may, today we are grappling with the situation of whether we should, we should continue with this dual centers of power and that it is totally unsuitable for the country's democracy. But little forgetting that the electoral systems in the country too plays a role in this. That is why we minority parties were quite keen that we should address the issue of the electoral system as well together with the abolition of the executive presidency. Yesterday the Prime Minister was seen to suggest that he wants a two-third majority to abolish the executive presidency and install a parliamentary system of governance after removing the executive presidential system. Whereas his deputy leader Sajid Premadasa very openly said that we must contest and we must carry on this government up to uh, next October or September, the full term of His Excellency the President and conduct the next presidential election and then attempt to win that election. So the United National Party itself appears to be having two points of view. And this is a question, a question of uh, some confusion for some of us who are in this coalition. So it is important for us to address that issue. So we need to resolve serious political questions about the electoral system. None of us are in favor of abolishing the current electoral system for the reason that we've experienced the worst in the local government elections as well as the attempt to change the electoral system the provincial council. We are now six provincial councils, no elections have been held. And the delimitation committee's report has been rejected by this parliament. 
by even the minister who brought the uh, system voting against it. That was the comedy of errors that we saw being staged in parliament. So therefore, there is a dilemma here. Of course, uh, Janata Vimukti Perumana wants the executive presidency abolished for the right reasons. But then, we cannot divorce it from the entire constitution and the need to change other things. What about the devolution aspect? And we must also remember that abolishing of the executive presidency cannot be done without a referendum. Because there are entrenched clauses that need to be changed and that will certainly attract a referendum and the Supreme Court will no doubt rule that this question cannot be decided by this parliament alone by a two-third majority. It has to be subjected to a referendum. So if a referendum is to be won, all sections of the country have got to be convinced that we do not want such a system. So people are not interested in piecemeal tinkering with the constitution. What we want is an overall constitutional reform which will replace the constitution with a new system by addressing every issue of contention. That is why uh, that, uh, we appointed a steering committee and the steering committee's report has been finalized and we have tabled it in parliament and we were to debate it and we have perhaps come to some understanding with the Tamil National Alliance that by February that we will uh, introduce it to uh, Parliament to attempt to see whether we can have an endorsement of that with a two-third majority in this House. But there are different points of view. No, no, we, we, we need to look at whether we can uh, introduce changes to the Constitution, you see, with, with an agreement of, by all parties. Because everybody now, JVP doesn't want the executive presidential system. Huh? Some of you want to change the electoral system. Some have uh, issues pertaining to the devolution uh, aspects of the constitution. And uh, His Excellency, the President seems to be having serious reservations about the appointment of uh, judges to the Constitutional Council. Having voted for it, having uh, approved it, is now uh, beginning to complain that uh, the senior most judges don't get appointed uh, since the Constitutional Council uh, is uh, not uh, looking at seniority. Now this is one of those complaints that he sought to make when we were summoned to meet with him uh, when the Prime Minister was sworn in. Everybody uh, listened to what he said. So, uh, now there is an issue concerning three political leaders in the country. One is Maitripala Sirisena, other is Ranil Vikram Singh. Yes. Thank you. Another is the Honorable Mahindra Rajapaksa. The three political leaders are looking at their political future. So this constitution the abolition of the executive presidency or uh, reintroducing the Westminster system cannot be uh, designed for the whim and fancy of these three individuals. The constitution of this country is not the property of Ranil Vikramasinghe, of Maitripala Sirisena, or Mahindra Rajapaksa. That's an eternal document. That's a sacred uh, book in which this entire country, uh, upon which this entire country's governance is conducted. So therefore, now what is the problem? Now His Excellency Mahindra Rajapaksa wishes to abolish the executive presidency because he cannot contest the next executive presidency. It's an issue for him. Honorable Ranil Vikram Singh is uh, a leader who doesn't believe in emotional, sentimental propaganda or irrational campaign uh, to mislead the masses. 
So, he sometimes, no, he has not himself contested the last two presidential elections. But then he feels that since he is a uh, political leader who appeals to the intelligentsia of the country, but cannot conduct an emotional, sentimental, uh, or irrational campaign, so he has always opted to let others contest for the presidential election. So he has an interest in restoring parliamentary democracy back and so that he can get himself re-elected uh, to parliament and then control executive power through parliament without an executive presidency as a different center of power. And His Excellency Maitripala Sirisena, having promised the country that he's going to abolish the executive presidency, now wants perhaps to look at the second bite of the cherry, as we call it, to try and contest the executive presidency once again, having promised to the country that he will not seek re-election. So, <coughs> this question cannot be decided on the whim and fancy of individual political leaders, but we have got to look at how the governance have been impacted by having dual centers of power, whether we are able to have proper separation of powers in the context of the executive presidential system. Certainly, we saw during the last 51 days, the experience of this country was such that an irrational and emotional, sentimental president who is hell-bent on <coughs> trying to interpret the constitution to his own convenience can seriously jeopardize governance in the country. That is what we experienced. Seven judges of the Supreme Court of this country unanimously held that the constitutional provisions had been violated in removing the, uh, in installing a prime minister, in dissolving parliament. We had, oh, I beg your pardon, in the question of installing the prime minister, it was a court Please of appeal. Find then the Supreme Court, in a unanimous verdict, held that the dissolution of parliament was unconstitutional. And with that became, uh, at least indirectly, the issue pertaining to the majority of parliament deciding the fate of Prime Minister was put to rest. So, all these complications uh, arise out of this particular issue. Now, in, 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 the, in the way, if we are to say in, uh, in single language, single uh, language, I have to say that I have to say that I have Make a Pradantma Nalua Hat Theatre, Ape, Danal Patumangi, Eutsahe, Atosin Kenwanang, Nataputuila Kutne, Beri Palua Kutne, Gina, Tatuakata, Batuna Kineka, Apidaki. Ebevin, Apita Siduino, me. Oh. You attempt, now it's a sagrape story, right? You try to grab power through the back door and at least through the front door you have come and taken the opposition leader's position. But never try it through the back door. You try to grab power of prime ministerial office through the back door. Now you have come through the front door, taking the... But, but out of your advice, see, uh, the former president I hope he will not become the former member of parliament. I mentioned this morning, there is a serious issue about, uh, let alone being the opposition leader, whether he is a member of parliament has to be decided by a select committee of this house, ultimately. You see, no, it, ambitious or not, I am not being personal here. I have my deeper respect for uh, the former president. But the question I told him when I met him after this crisis, as to why did he, why was he in such a haste if some of you have, have pushed him into a serious political debacle, man who was riding the high wave of popularity has compromised his popularity unnecessarily 
trying to grab power through the back door to satisfy a few of you who had misled him. That is his fate. I hope, I hope he will see some Sena council soon and uh, uh, be resigned to his fate as an opposition leader uh, in the coming years to come. Thank you.